All right, time for the weekly ice bath. Here we go. Start. Uh, 10 minutes the most, 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Burn. Yeah. Burn. Put them in now. Okay. So I'm doing my ass bath today at, uh, I don't know what time it is. I think it's around 10, 10.30 on Sunday. So Thursday is not gonna work anymore. Fridays would be my ideal day. I was just too busy on Friday. I didn't get home till three and I was hungry. I hadn't eaten all day. Yesterday was just too busy. So today I plan to do it today and then I got the rest of the day off on Sunday. I'm gonna go eat a ribeye steak after this and relax. I'm gonna watch the movie Tropic Thunder. <laughs> Cause I don't think I ever saw it all the way through and a lot of people have been talking about it. So I learned a few things about the ice bath. Um, there's a great podcast on the Andrew Huberman Lab podcast. And he talks to a woman who did a bunch of studies on this and brown fat. So apparently this process gets the brown fat moving, which is good for your survival. Um, it's good for your blood pressure. It's good for a lot of stuff. So it made me feel good that I was doing this. Um, there's no real benefit going past 11 minutes, apparently. Um, it's not an endur endurance contest, but they also said that the shivering is really good so you can't just get in for three or four minutes and get to shivering. It takes a little while. So um, I like to get to where I'm shivering because that's apparently supposed to be very good. But the thing that I found interesting, oh my God, um, is there's a thing called the drop. So the way the drop works is, I noticed that after I get out, for about an hour, I'm freezing and I shiver a lot. And I didn't understand why that was because I wasn't in the cold anymore. So what happens is when I get in the water, all the blood goes to my core. That's why my hands hurt. And apparently that's a common occurrence, your hands hurting. Um, but then you get out, the blood rushes back to, your, to the surface. The surface is still cold, so then it rushes back back in towards the center. That's called the drop. And that's why I'm freezing once uh, I get out. So that was interesting to learn that. Same thing this morning, just been rationalizing why I'm doing this, not wanting to do this, knowing that I ultimately am gonna do it because I said to a bunch of people, I'm gonna do it every week. Um, but I still have that resistance, you know, to doing it. It's a beautiful day here. The, the last two mornings have been kind of like San Francisco with clouds, it's kind of like a haze in the morning. So not a lot of sun and then it kind of burns off and it's mostly burned off now. As you can see, I got sun on my face. It's not really warm yet because it's still pretty early in the morning. You can hear the birds going like crazy. This morning, I was driving and I saw a coyote, uh, which I've never seen up here. It was in Rockland, coyote crossing the street. So I got to read up on the coyote medicine, see what that portends for me. Mm. Ooh, ooh. <sighs> Make no mistake, it's cold. 30 pounds of ice today. 
So you can see it's not really melting too fast. I put uh, one bag in first with the water. So that all melted. Then I dumped 20 pounds on top of that. And then I get in. This fucking ice bath is dedicated to Jerry C. Uh, Jerry C was my father. And I've been thinking about my dad a lot. Um, this last week, I'm not sure why. Um, but I do miss my dad. I miss having the person in my life that's called dad. <laughs> Um, we lost dad in 2018. He went pretty fast. Once, once he went to the hospital, it was like two weeks later, he was gone. Um, and uh, I had a good dad. As far as dads go, I got pretty lucky. Um, I wouldn't say like me and my dad were best friends. We talked a lot. I was definitely rebellious in my teenage years and I wanted nothing to do with my mom and my dad for a while. Um, but we became closer, you know, as time went by and as I matured and, uh, and they softened. That's kind of what happened. Um, but the thing about my dad is he was a great example of a strong, you know, male, a hardworking leader, you know, he managed uh, Safeway stores for most of his career. That's a hard job. You got a lot of personalities and uh, you got to deal with a lot of shit and he did it, you know, he did it really well. They kept wanting to promote him to district manager and he didn't want that wanted more of a balance in life so he was leading the way there <laughs> um, I still remember my dad holding me when I was young and and me rubbing his face and feeling you know his his uh, you know I guess he hadn't shaved in a few days and uh, I, I remember that as a child that memory um, I remember when I went through my first divorce and uh, I was kind of, I guess that's when I was first labeled the black sheep of the family. And uh, some family members wouldn't even talk to me. And uh, my dad did, you know. He, he said, you know, I'm not gonna lose my son over this. And uh, he reached out to me and that was a beautiful thing. And I'll always remember my dad for that. Um, but I'd say the biggest gift I got from my dad is my work ethic my discipline you know every day he got up made his coffee went to work and uh, every day I get up <laughs> make my coffee <laughs> and uh, go to work out go to work go to drive go to make an article or a video or day trade you know and I love that life and I got that from my dad and that'll be my life till the day I die I don't ever want to stop working unless I physically can't. I love having something to do, something to create, something to make, something to do. Um, my dad did retire and uh, what I saw of what happened to him was I don't want to retire. He just, you know, pretty much sat watching Fox News and uh, Played golf once a week and you know died at 84 um, you know who knows how happy he was um, at the end um, but I did get to you know I did get to have like a final conversation with him where I told him I loved him and he told me he loved me and I said you're a great dad and he said I was a great son and that was our last chat so I was really fortunate to have like a completion like that. So that's my dad. That was my dad. He's been gone five years now.
and uh, he was in a dream of mine this week. He was just there. I don't remember anything specific about it, but he was there. And that was nice to see him. It was kind of a like a 40-year-old version of him, you know, not old um, in pain or anything like that, just, you know, strong, you know, when he was in his, in his strength. So, Jerry C., this, uh, this ice bath is for you. Thanks for being my dad. I love you, and I'm grateful that I ended up as your son. Okay, the shivering has started. That's good. It's a really beautiful day. The thing about Sacramento area is that it can get really hot. And this weekend, it's only gonna get to like high 70s, low 80s. Perfect. There's a turkey vulture flying by. You can hear the birds. Okay, let the shivering begin. Good. Gotta say, once I'm in here, it's great. It's like the greatest thing, you know? Everything slows down. I don't really think much, just sort of this vessel through which words come. It's just an overwhelming physical sensation and it just gets me out of my head and after a few minutes you kind of get numb to the coldness of it and it feels like a little warm cocoon even though I'm shivering and yet I abhor the thought of doing this every freaking time every morning when I wake up knowing I'm gonna do it Okay, we're at 12 minutes. I watched uh, Russell Brand do an ice bath. Actually, I watched Tony Robbins. <laughs> uh, he has a cold plunge. So he has like a built-in little hole in his outside deck, you know, with the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean outside his you know, his backyard. And uh, he just sort of drops into it. He said it's 57 degrees. I'm like, ha, that ain't nothing. Uh, but it will definitely wake you up. Um, but I saw him do this years ago. If you haven't seen um, Tony Robbins, I Am Not Your Guru, it is a fantastic watch. I watched it a second time this week. What an amazing man. Amazing uh, what he's done. And I've participated in some of his programs and every time it was super valuable. Anyway, then I saw a YouTube video, I think it was of Russell Brand um, getting into, his was more of a wooden, more of a permanent fixture. Um, and it had ice on top of it. I don't know how cold it was. And he got into it and you know, it was quiet for about a minute, just breathing. And then uh, he talked for about two or three minutes and got out, you know, after like three and a half minutes. Um, so I guess that does 80% of the work. I don't think he can get to shivering in that short amount of time. Maybe he can. Um, but I like staying in longer. Definitely makes me colder, so my body has to work even harder to get warmed up. The other thing they said was, um, by doing, doing this over and over and over again, my body's learning how to regulate itself faster. So in situations where I would have been cold in the past, outside, you know, I'll be less cold. And in situations where um, I would be super hot, I'll be less hot. 
Well, they also do you know, the sauna for 20 minutes at the, uh, the club. Wow, this has gone by really fast. I have to get out in six, five, just a few seconds. So, ice bath number 10, done, baby. Here we go.